Hello, welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or on onespotmedia.com. We also are live on Music 99 and gojamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, CSEC English Lit, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page or on Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today we'll be teaching you how to analyze short stories. I'm Charlene Woodburn. We are now going to look at our two short stories. We are analyzing <coughs> Two short stories, and we are going to show you how to go through them. The two short stories are The Man of the House by Frank O'Connor and The Day the World Almost Came to an End by Pearl Creighton. Before we begin to look into our stories, we are going to take a look at our CSEC English B objectives. C students should be able to grasp insights from reading literature by detecting and the apt use of devices. Recognizing implicit themes, making critical appraisal of values and concepts expressed in literature and relating these to everyday living, organizing and sequencing ideas to communicate emotions and imaginative interpretations of experience. That's our 2015 English B copyrighted objectives. You like short stories, don't you? Or stories in general? What is a story? Did you ever think about what is a story? A huh? narration of events? Something you'd like to talk about? Okay, a story is something worth telling. That's what a story is. It is not just narrating events. It is when you have heard what it is about, something is left in you, a response is elicited, and you are thinking about it, it may be that it affects your behavior, or it may be something that you can live virtually through. Do you know what it is to live virtually? When you live virtually through an experience, you do not experience it directly. You read what happens to other persons, and you learn from what they do. So stories are very useful, as in other aspects of literature. We can learn from reading stories. In the stories that we are doing today, we have some imagery here. This represents the eclipse of a moon. This is an old time helicopter and this represents a medicine bottle. In these two stories, we have some children in the stories. One is a boy and the other is a girl. In The Man of the House by Frank O'Connor, 
we have a little boy, and you say, the man of the house. Already, when you say the man of the house, and I'm telling you, reminding you, because you should have read it before, that the man is a little boy. What comes to mind? When you say the man of the house, you're looking at authority and you're looking at responsibility. So the man of the house being a little boy, already we can begin to think of some irony. How is a little boy being referred to as the man of the house? And in the day the world almost came to an end, by Pearl Creighton, we will read about the eclipse and a very frightening event one night that has something to do with an, a helicopter. We already looked at our English, English B objectives, so we are going to move forward. I'm going to do a short reading from The Man of the House. When I woke, I heard my mother coughing below in the kitchen. She had been coughing for days, but I had paid no attention. We were living in the old Yugal Road at the time. The old hilly coaching road into East Cork. The coughing sounded terrible. I dressed and went downstairs in my stocking feet and in the clear morning light, I saw her, unaware that she was being watched, collapsed into a little wickerwork armchair holding her side. She had made an attempt to light the fire, but it had gone against her. She looked so tired and helpless that my heart turned over with compassion. I ran to her. Are you all right, mom? I asked. I'll be all right in a second, she replied, trying to smile. The old sticks were wet and the smoke started me coughing. Go back to bed and I'll light the fire, I said. Oh, okay, my child, she said anxiously. Sure, I have to go to work. You can work like that, I said. I'll stop at home from school and look after you. That sounds like a real man, right? A real man, someone taking responsibility. Here's a little boy taking responsibility. So in this particular setting, you see that the young boy is attempting to take responsibility. Then he says, it's a funny thing about women. The way they'll take orders from anything in trousers, even if it's only 10. So I said, wow. Imagine a little boy already thinking like this. So if you are like me, who tends to be on the feminist side, then you're going to start making some associations. You're going to say, this little boy is behaving so arrogant already. Okay then, I'll stop there. Let's take a little peek into the day the world almost came to an end. The little girl is speaking. She says, if you haven't had the world coming to an end on you when you're 12 years old and a sinner, you don't know how lucky you are. 
When it happened to me, it scared the living daylights out of me and some of the joy of sinning out of me and in a lot of other ways, messed up my life altogether. But if I am to believe Ralph Waldo Emerson's compensation, I guess I got some good out of it too. So the little girl is looking back. What do you notice about these two stories? They are being told how? First person narration. They are being told by first person narrators and the persons are looking back at what happened. Now they are grown and they are looking back to see how their lives evolved. So we looked at what is a story and we said that a story is something worth telling. So by the time we are finished with these stories, you should think about whether you are able to remember something very important that has affected you. We, when we are reading literature, as we do with the poems, we want to develop strategies for reading. Read to understand what you are reading. Making casual or familiar associations. So when you read, and the little boy, for example, says, you know, it's a funny thing about women, the way they'll take orders from anything in trousers, if it's only 10, then you start to think about that. You start to think something. Okay then? And when the young lady, the young girl says that we were living in a community close to the hearth and God, then you start to think about that. So you are reading and thinking. If you say close to the earth, for example, what comes to your mind? Huh? They are simple persons, farmer, farming community, things like that. So you are reading and thinking. Then you reread to identify important features and elements and you make notes. More about the notes later on. Also, when you are rereading, you want to make sure that you are getting some very important content. Some persons will say they like multiple choice. But if you do not get the content, what the actual facts are in the story, you won't be able to draw analysis out of it and, you, and you'll have trouble really coming with impressions, implications, so you need the content. Detect figurative devices, imagery, narrative technique, and themes. For example, a while ago when I was reading from the first one, Man of the House, and then I read the day the world almost came to an end, I stopped to look at the narrative technique. The narrative technique. What method is the story coming to us through? And we saw that it's the first person. The people are talking about themselves, their events, what happened to them. So first person narration. And we want to pick up figurative devices. For example, the first figurative device that you could see in Man of the House is, is the title. Because it says Man of the House. And that's metaphoric for what? Because the story is, referent, is talking about a boy. So if the story is about a boy, why is the title called Man of the House? So is it ironic? We'll soon find out.
Then we review. We review the form and structure. So you're, you're reading it again to look at the overall presentation of the story, how it is written. You, that, that time, is the dialogue significant in there? You want to pick up mood, and you want to look at the setting, how it affects the characters, and things like that. In this particular instance, we are comparing, which, with, in which we are looking at what is similar in the stories, and we are contrasting, we are looking at what is different. How does that help you? You know that literature is life, right? Life experiences, and we are using up our critical skills when we take on lit literary analysis. And so if we're comparing and contrasting, how can it help me in real life? It helps me to make choices. It helps me to make decisions. I can choose why, for example, I need to wear my mask. That's very important. And if I don't, so we are comparing and contrasting. So, I have said to you that we interpret the experience virtually, virtually, so you can improve your life by studying literature. Because when we read about the experiences that happen to persons, they don't have to happen to us. We live through their experiences and we can improve their lives. Do you know that there's a saying that says there's no frigate like a book? Frigate. Do you know that word frigate? It's spelled F-R-I-G-A-T-E. There's no frigate like a book. That's a little line from a poem that I used to read. And a frigate is a very fast warship. It can take you to some places, just like literature, just like reading, so we can travel around the world studying literature and live in some countries and live some lives and get some experiences through the studying of literature. That's why it is so important. So let us go a little bit deeper now into the two stories. In this story, in over here, the little boy lives with his mom. They live together in a community that is a humble community. I won't say it's a poor community, a humble community. All right then, humble. And he goes to a school and this particular morning, he, he, got, he was awoken by, awakened by his mother's coughing. And she was coughing and coughing. And she was trying to make the tea so that he could get something to eat to go to school. But she couldn't manage. The smoke came up in her face and she was coughing. So the little boy went and he made the fire for her and told her to lie down. So this little picture here represents a sick mother. She was ill that morning. And the little boy went and he, he made the tea. But while he was making the, the fire for the tea, he said that, you know, it's because his mother is so economical with the firewood. Why she's having so much trouble with the fire. He, in his mind, does not understand how frugal his mom is trying to be. So he took a large pile of sticks and made a big fire. You know, they say men like big fires. I don't know. I've heard it. Have you heard it? That men love big fires? Well, this little boy, he made a big fire. And very soon, he got tea for his mom. The tea was too strong, though, but he had more water. He poured it on, and she was able to have tea. And he told her to go and lie down. She went and, 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 and did that. And afterward, he went to call her good friend, Minnie Ryan. 
And Minnie Ryan came and looked at her. And Minnie Ryan said, all right then, if she does not get better, she will have to get the doctor. So she said to him, if you have some whiskey in this house, you could give her a drop with some lemon. And she see that, oh, that works first. And the little boy went out and he bought the whiskey. She didn't get so much better, so here comes the doctor. And the little boy had to go to a poor relief office to get a stamp so to show the doctor that they really couldn't pay the bill. You know, something like we have like pass or so, a past student, well, he could have been a past student in our culture. And the doctor came and the doctor prescribed. And the little, the little boy went all the way over town, hills and valleys. Now this story is set into a place where there are lots of hills and valleys. And he had to walk all long way to go to the drugstore to get the medicine for his mom. When he went there to get the medicine, he met a little girl in the, in the dispensary. The little girl was waiting for medicine for someone in her family. She got her medicine first. She waited on him to get his medicine. And they decided to leave the drugstore together. But all this time, the little girl had her eyes on the little boy's mom's medicine. And she asked him if she could taste it. And he said, why? She, you know, at first, he was trying to be, you know, critical. But eventually, he succumbed to her. He was overcome. You, you can imagine this little boy. He's not living with any sister or brother. He doesn't have a girl in the home. And he was overcome by her. And he, he let her taste his mom's medicine. And he tasted her medicine. Her medicine was awful. But her mom, his mom's medicine was nice, sweet, cough syrup. And the little girl said, let me taste some more. And she told the little boy to taste some. And together, they drank off his mom's medicine. You know that this little boy also had a penny. And he wanted to buy a candle to take to the cathedral to pray for his mom. But when he saw the girl, he had spent the penny buying sweets, and they both ate the sweets. So no, he didn't get to buy the candle. And he, they drank off his mom's medicine. When he realized what had happened to him, he was very frightened. He got up, he shouted, and he ran as fast as he could. <clears throat> Sorry, he went to the church, the cathedral and prayed a prayer of repentance and asked the Blessed Virgin Mary to perform a miracle on behalf of his mom to get her to, to be healed. And then he went home very low-spirited. Well, to cut a long story short now, when he, he went home, he found that his mom had indeed gotten better, but he was so overcome by the medicine that he fell asleep and his mom had to look after him. This story now, very quickly. This story is about a little girl. She also lives in a, in a town, in, in a place, in the countryside, where there's a plantation, a huge plantation, where they did farming. And in this particular instance, there were a lot of cornfields. And these cornfields were plowed by men carrying oxen, horses. The men, the, 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 the oxen would, would be driven by the men, and they would carry the plows. Now, the little girl, this, is, this community, the setting, 
is a very religious one. In terms of the aura, the beliefs of the persons, they had a strong Christian um, um, foundation and they would go to church a lot. But this little girl, she didn't want to become a Christian as yet. She enjoyed doing little things that she, you know, she said she liked to sin, a lot, sin, you know, in her way, because what she would cause it is eating the plums from other people's trees, playing dominoes and so on. Those are things that the church would preach against. She said she doesn't want to stop doing those things. So she can't afford to get religion right now. And so the little girl was very resistive. This particular day, she was sitting down in the field and she was playing in the mud, in the dirt. And her friend ran up to her and said, the world is coming to an end. She was very skeptical and she didn't believe. But what they knew from studying the farmer's almanac is that the moon was going to eclipse. They were going to have an eclipse. And in those days, the persons thought the world would certainly come to an end if the sun did not override the moon in the eclipse, the world would come to an end. Picture of the eclipse. Well, the little girl, she was so worried, so very, very worried. And she wanted to resolve it. And she wanted to speak to her father about it. And she spent the day just in a very turbulent mood. And in the evening, when her father came home, she spoke to him about it. She went to bed, but she could not sleep. And while she was in her bed that night in the, in the darkness, the eerie darkness, because the darkness now becomes magnified to her, she was more fearful, and that's another setting, because it affected her mood and she couldn't sleep. She heard a sound, and the sound was a rumbling, rumbling in the, in the in coming, and the rum, and then it got louder and louder. And she jumped up out of bed because she said, This is it, this is it, this is it. The world is coming to an end. The world is coming to an end. And she ran out in her nightgown through the door, shouting and screaming, The world is coming to an end. Run for your life. She didn't even remember that it was supposed to be an eclipse. Maybe she didn't know what an eclipse really looked like. And she ran outside shouting through the cabins, running out, running all the way. Luckily, her father was coming home, being a deacon from, from a church meeting. And he was able to hold her and to reassure her that it was just a helicopter passing, not the world coming to an end. And she cried a good cry, and her father spoke to her, and she was able to calm down and steady her mind. And, she, and, she has, and she's now looking back on how her life changed after that. And so we have looked at the stories and the next thing that we really want to do is to go into the actual comparative analysis, which we are going to do when we return from the break. Remember, 